All right, hello, this is Mr. Nolan, uh, and today we're going to talk digestion. So our goals for the screencast are to be able to model um, fungal digestion using uh, paper models. Now, we did this in class with paper models, but what we're going to do today, I put together this PowerPoint so that we can kind of get a sense for what did this look like. So we are going to digest proteins, we're going to digest starches, and then we're also, as a bonus, we're going to digest fats. So we should be able, by the end of this screencast, to be able to say, all right, this is how protein, starches, and fats are digested by fungi. So just as some, some digestion basics, um, there's some terms that we should have seen before. Um, one of the basic things is that pretty much all foods that any organism is going to eat are going to start as polymers. So a polymer, poly means many, um, and so we're going to start with polymers. So this is our food that we're going to start with. And the polymers are going to uh, be broken down in digestion. So this would be what we'd consider digestion. Uh, digestion. Those are going to be broken down into monomers. And then those monomers are absorbed into the cells, and this is called absorption. So those are going to show up inside of our cells. So this is just a very generic sort of way of thinking of digestion. We start with polymers of food. We're going to break those down with digestion. Usually enzymes <laughs> are involved here. We're going to have monomers, little pieces, and those are absorbed into the cell. So that's how we are sort of thinking about this in very generic terms. So let's look at some specific polymers and how those get broken down to form a food for fungi in particular. So let's start with proteins. So we're going to start with proteins. And we've got this, this protein <coughs> that's made of four amino acids. Well, what this fungus is going to do is it's going to produce these enzymes. And the enzymes do what's called hydrolysis on the um, the, uh, the protein to break it down into amino acids. So hydrolysis is sort of another term for digestion. We're going to break it down adding water. Hydro means water and lysis means to break apart. So we're going to break this protein apart using water. So now this all happens at the same time, what I'm about to show you. It's not one step at a time, it really all happens at once. But these enzymes, at the same time, they actually break our amino acids apart So they break them apart, and then after they've broken them apart, or while they're breaking them apart, they use water, which is floating around in the soil. So that's what's over here. We've got soil, um, or, de, or the, the earth, or whatever situation this is. And the water molecules, we have to fill in these gaps. So we've got like these gaps here on our molecules. So in order for th this process to take place, we need to sort of fill in these gaps. So we're going to go ahead and kind of figure out how to do that. So the water is used to fill these gaps. Now if we look here, we can tell that nitrogen tends to want to bond with, in addition to carbon, it wants to bond with hydrogen. So we can take a hydrogen from water, and we can attach that to our nitrogens. And again, this kind of all happens at the same time. I'm showing it as a step-by-step -step process, but it really all happens at the same time. And then our carbons, if we look over here, our carbons are going to tend to want to bond with oxygens, which themselves are bonded to hydrogens. So those leftover pieces of the water, we're going to add those, we're going to connect those to our carbons here. Not in any particular order. And what we are seeing here is that we have now co uh, correctly formed these amino acids because now every uh, atom has the right number of bonds. Carbon has four bonds, oxygen has two bonds, nitrogen has three bonds. Uh, we also have got sulfur in there, so we've got this kind of oddball sulfur. Um, and now these can be absorbed into the fungus. So what you just saw was an example of digestion uh, by hydrolysis. So that's what we just saw. So we can apply this exact same idea to uh, starches and to fats. And so we'll look at those both right now. So here, let's go ahead and break up some starches. So uh, I've got this starch, and we're going to treat this in exactly the same way. Our fungus is going to produce some enzymes, and those enzymes are going to break the starch into smaller pieces. These are our monomers. So the starch was the polymer, and now these are the monomers. 
But again, we have gaps here that we need to uh, fill in. Right? How are we going to fill in these gaps? Well, if we look at our carbons, it seems as though carbon is going to tend to want to bond with oxygens. Right? Most of the time in our sugars on the outside, our carbon is going to bond with oxygen. So let's kind of figure out how to satisfy these sugars so that their atoms have all the right uh, bonds. So this carbon over here is going to want to bond with an oxygen. And I say it wants to bond. Obviously, atoms don't want anything. They're not alive. But in terms of the way that atoms sort of behave, it's going to attach to that oxygen. So this monomer, this, this sugar, is happy. Um, this hydrogen, if we look here, what does the oxygens tend to bond with? Because I've got this oxygen that's still got a hole here. What do oxygens tend to bond with? Well, it looks like they tend to bond with hydrogens, right? If we look at these sugars, the oxygens, in addition to carbon, tends to bond with hydrogen. So I'm going to grab this hydrogen that's left over from my water, and I'm going to attach that to my oxygen. And now, this glucose is almost happy. It needs to bond here with an oxygen, right? Now it's done. And now our remaining hydrogen, we're going to attach to that oxygen. So these glucoses are now all complete. These are, uh, you know, the, we've satisfied all our rules. The carbons all have four bonds, the oxygens all have two bonds, and the hydrogens have one bond. So these can now get absorbed into our fungus, just like the amino acids. So that's how we would digest starches into sugars that would get absorbed by this fungus. Now as our bonus slide, let's go ahead and look at fats. If we were to break a fat down, same exact process. Fats are a little odd because they're kind of like um, heterogeneous molecules. They're not just polymers made of all the same thing. We've actually got this, uh, this glycerol in here. So this glycerol, this backbone of the fat, is going to get broken off. And these fatty acids are, are broken off, kind of go their own ways. And we've got water floating around. Notice that, our, again, we have oxygens here that now don't have anything to bond with. And we have carbons here that don't have anything to bond with. So we kind of have to figure out how we're going to satisfy those sort of missing bonds. So our carbons tend to want to bond with oxygen. So we're going to grab those OHs from our waters, and we're going to stick them right there. And our hydrogens tend to want to bond with oxygen. So we're going to grab our hydrogens. So those hydrogens, I'm going to add some bonds right there. So our hydrogens are going to bond with our oxygens. And now what we've done is we've broken this down into its uh, monomers, right? We've got our amino acids and a glycerol. So now these can get absorbed into the fungus. So again, digestion by hydrolysis. Uh, it looks like all we have to do is just figure out where, you know, where we put those empty, empty spaces that have those, those atoms that are not satisfied. So just kind of as a generic model for fungal digestion, um, you know, you can see here I've sort of included everybody, and we're, you know, in, a, in general terms, what this digestion process looks like, our fungus is producing, remember, it's producing enzymes. This digestion doesn't happen just randomly, spontaneously in the soil. We've got enzymes that the fungus is going to produce, and those enzymes are going to do hydrolysis on these polymers. So I've got my proteins over here, I've got my starches over here, and I've got my fats over here. And so these need to get broken down in order for that fungus to absorb them and use them for other things. So my uh, proteins are going to get broken down into amino acids, from the addition of water. So when we do this hydrolysis, we're adding water to that protein and breaking it down into amino acids. For our sugars, we're going to break, or I'm sorry, starches, we're going to break those down into sugars with the addition of water. And then also, last but not least, for fats, we're going to break those down into fatty acids with the addition of water. So that's why this is called hydrolysis, because we're going to keep adding water and that water shows up in our products, in these little monomers that we've created. That water will show up here. So what's interesting about this process is that unlike a lot of processes that we've seen, there's no byproducts at all. We just end up with monomers, right? We're going from polymers to monomers, right? Polymers to monomers. That's a generic sort of um, way to think of this.
So now, after we've broken them down into monomers, that's when the fungus absorbs them. So the enzymes do digestion. And then after digestion is complete, we have absorption. Right? We have absorption after uh, digestion is complete. So uh, our, our amino acids are now absorbed, and our sugars are now absorbed, and then our fatty acids are now absorbed. So these are all now, these show up in our fungus. And this fungus can now send these molecules to other parts, to other places that it needs to send them. So there's other processes that that fungus can now do with these uh, molecules. It could do respiration or it could do biosynthesis. There's a variety of different things that our fungus can now do now that it has um, gone ahead and digested those particles and absorbed those particles. So I hope that this was beneficial uh, and, and helpful for understanding how fungi um, do this incredible process of, of digestion by hydrolysis through enzymes, and they go ahead and absorb those nutrients. Uh, and this is all going on all the time. Uh, fungi do this night and day. As long as there's enough moisture for them to, to live, and as long as there's enough food lying around uh, in the soil, they can do this. They can use their enzymes, break them down by adding water, and now you get these monomers, which the fungus is able to absorb and use for other things in its body.